Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be talking about flying cross country technique called the final glide. And we fly at Texas Soaring Association so look us up for more information. What I mean by final glide is this technique is we're no longer going to find or look for other thermals. We're going to head back to base as fast as possible. That's the whole idea of it. And we want to arrive at that destination or base airport at at least a thousand feet above the ground. The PW5 makes a perfect cross-country trainer. It has a wingspan of about 44 feet, a maximum weight of about 660 pounds. Air speeds are between 35 miles an hour up to about 140 miles an hour. Here's the flight. I'll be starting at TSA at the top. Next, clockwise, headed easterly, I'll be flying to George Shanks Field. From there, I'll be headed west toward Dragon Tail. From there up to Lupscombe, and then back to TSA. And that's all about a 40 mile uh, flight. And remember all of this is part of your training. So my plan is when I get to Lupscombe, I want to gain as much altitude as I can and then head back to TSA in a final glide. In the final glide, I'll be approaching speeds between 70 and 100 miles per hour. Normally my air speeds would be between say uh, 40 to 50, 60 miles per hour. So this is how we're going to make that flight as the crow flies. On this next image, this is the information I'll be providing you in real time. I use a built-in GPS data logger and add it to this video to make all these effects. And it's all in real time synced with the video. So on the bottom left hand corner, that's uh, ground speed, not air speed. So don't get that confused. GPS can only calculate ground speed. Now moving up to the top left, that's the actual flight and that is to scale. Do you notice that red dot? That's Lubscombe and basically I'll be headed east on the final glide back to TSA. Now going over to top center, that's your compass heading. Moving over to the right, that's the rate of climb indicator as measured in feet per minute. On the bottom right hand corner, that's the altimeter. Please note we're about 660 feet above sea level, so in this example we would subtract 600 feet roughly and we're 3,800 feet above the ground. So let's get ready to fly. Okay, I'm over Lupskin Airfield and of course my goal is just to get as high as possible. I'll continue to circle here until I get about 5,400. So at this point I'm going to start converting this additional height energy into speed energy. The PW5 has what we call a 32 to 1 glide ratio, which, which simply means for every thousand feet of altitude, I could travel six miles. Even though technically we could glide 30 miles, that's not the number we're going to use. We're going to use a much lower number to be conservative on our final glide. Anyway, I know for, for a fact that I can make TSA on this final glide without taking any more additional thermals to make it back to destination. So I'm gaining airspeed, I'm converting that height energy into speed energy as we move closer to TSA. And if you notice that little red dot on the top left hand corner is moving toward TSA. I'll give you the approximate distance I am from, from the airport. I'm flying at an airspeed that is called maximum structural cruising speed. And that's the end of the green arc on the airspeed indicator. When flying in the caution, airspeed is indicated by the yellow. You do not want to make abrupt control changes. You'll notice the red dot is getting closer to TSA, our final destination. And the goal would be to arrive there at 1,000 feet above the ground. And I'm still playing conservative. I'm, you know, I'm in a race for myself. I'm not in a competition meet. So I don't really need to nail that 1,000 feet. But anyway, all of this is part of your training. Obviously, I have TSA in sight. I'm getting close. I'm probably about uh, another mile or so from the airport over the top of it at this point. As I approach TSA, I want to turn up the volume on the radio so I can make sure I can hear other traffic in the, in the area. 
So now that I've arrived at TSA, I'm just going to make a right hand sweeping turn to help burn off some of this excess altitude. You definitely want your eyes out looking for traffic. You got the radio on, but you certainly want to keep a visual reference of all things around you. So at this point, I'm just going to make another turn back toward the airport as I burn off this excess altitude. Coming around now, I'll be making a left-hand pattern for runway 18 at TSA. My goal in the flying the pattern is to be about 900 to 1,000 feet above the ground at midway uh, center of the runway. I did notice that the altimeter is off maybe 150 feet on the screen from what you see versus the altimeter in the plane, but that's fine. This is all for instructional purposes only. And now I'm going to do a slip just to burn off that excess altitude so I can meet my goal to be midfield at about 900 feet above the ground. I've had some people say, why don't you just use your spoilers? Well, the problem is if I use my spoilers at this point and they got stuck open, I'm certainly going to make the runway and make an abbreviated pattern is what we call it. But a slip is just a better way to go. Okay, at this point we're setting up our landing approach and I'll go through my thought process as we begin the final landing. So as we get lower to the ground, one of the things that we want to do is pick up our speed. We don't fly slow when we're in the pattern. At this point, I'm turning uh, left base. I'm looking at angles to the runway to determine whether I'm high or low. And it's always best to be a little bit higher because you can certainly use those spoilers to get down very quickly. Now we're coming up to turning final here in just a moment. I do have about 50% spoilers activated at this time. It's my left hand. I'm watching that airspeed. We got it. We got it nailed. We're looking out that window paying attention. And I notice I made a slight correction, but you got to be real careful. You don't want to turn those wings too, too much. And then touch down right at the end of the runway. And we'll roll out, keep the wings level. We're still flying. I'm holding full up elevator and just using brakes to slow down to a stop. Just because we're on the ground doesn't mean we're not flying anymore. We fly this plane until we're at a full stop. We'll try to keep those wings as level as long as we can. Well, there you have it, folks. That's what we call final glide, and it's all part of your training when you start doing cross-country flying. So be sure and look us up. Look up texassoaring.org for more information about our glider club. Check out my YouTube site because i got a lot more fun videos to watch. So there you have it, friends. I hope you had a great day, and we'll see you in the air next time. And again, don't forget to look up texassoaring.org for more information. And we'll see you in the air next time. Bye-bye.